Good morning, guys. It's April 12th. We've been talking about all these moral things. So the first thing, two days ago, I started about moral decision about sin. Yesterday was moral divinity, and today we're going to be talking about moral dominion. So, I've looked at the definition of moral dominion, and this is what dominion means. The power or right of governing and controlling. Rule, control, lands or domains subject to sovereignty or control, a territory under its own form of government. The Dominion of Canada. So, that's an example. The Dominion of Canada. So, do you have moral dominion over yourself? So, do we have complete control a territory under its own form of government. You know, I don't believe that. I, I mean, I'm in, I'm in control of some things that I do. But if I got God on my side, then I let him take full control of me and all that I do. So is this godly of me, which we talked about yesterday, that moral divinity to keep going? So... I'm going to be in Romans today, chapter 6, verses 9 and 11. That's what our verses are of the day. So I'm going to read those. Knowing that Christ being raised from the dead dieth no more. Death hath no more dominion over him. So, since he died, he can't die anymore. So, that has no power over him. No governing over him. Verse 10. For in that he died. He died unto sin once. But in that he liveth. He liveth unto God. Now verse 11. The last one. Likewise reckon ye also yourselves to be dead. Indeed unto sin. But alive unto God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. I just want to give praise to Jesus today for dying for our sins and also to the Father for sending His only one and begotten Son. It's just another great day. It's Monday. It's the day we get to begin our week and our walk with God after we just got done worshiping Him on Sunday. That's the Sabbath day. That's the chosen day that we have had through, you know, civilization through histories and centuries ago that we've given our time to praise God the seventh day Sunday so I'm going to read a little bit about verses 9 and 11 from my New Living Translation because it does give a really good basis of the verses because of Christ's death and resurrection his followers, or followers need never fear death that assurance frees us to enjoy fellowship with Him and to do His will. This will affect all our activities. Work and worship, play, Bible study, quiet times, and times of caring for others. When you know that you don't have to fear death, you will experience a new vigor in life. You know, I'm, I'm ready for Jesus to come back. I don't know about you guys. You guys are like, oh, not, not yet. I still got things to do in my life. Well, I'm to the point in my life. Come on back. It's time to go. You know, I'm, I'm ready to go to heaven. I'm ready to get out of here and have a new way of life with God, even though I've got my new way of life now. I want to have that everlasting life, which I do have. But as long as I got long suffer here on earth and do his will i will but you know the sooner he comes back the happier i'll be <laughs> you know but i'm still thankful i'm uh, still going to be a servant of his righteousness and whatever i do consider yourselves to be dead to the power of sin means that we should regard our old sinful nature as dead and unresponsive to sin because of our union and identification with Christ, we no longer want to pursue our old plans, desires, and goals. 
Now we want to live for the glory of God. As we start this new life, the Holy Spirit will help us become all that Christ wants us to be. So, you got to really think about what the Holy Spirit wants you to do. Do you, do you think about it or do you just do what the Holy Spirit wants you to do? You know, you're walking through Walmart, say, and, you know, you're walking past a guy who's asking for money. Do you ignore him? Or do you just keep walking? Or, uh, you know, you got all this extra food that you know is bad and it's old. You just throw it away? Or do you take it to, you know, a shelter house, that a place that can use it? You got some old clothes. Do you donate them or do you just throw them away? Those are just small things. Whenever you serve people, do you ask for things in return or do you do the full service deed and not, you just do it for full sacrifice and, uh, and not just with your time and, and your money and things like that, but with your heart. In your mind, and your spirit, do you do things like that? These are questions to ask yourself. Because God judges us by our hearts. The only way to be able to use your heart fully is not to be in sin. It's that true love for God, and I fully stand stand in that belief. So, let's keep going. It was because of our sin that death fixed its grip on Jesus. But he rose to live forever. Death hath no more dominion over the believer. For we are dead with Christ who no longer dies. Jesus went through an irreversible transformation in his death and resurrection. Believers also undergo an irreversible transformation. We die to the old man. This is that transformation, becoming a Christian, a believer of God. You know, when I, when I talk to people, sometimes I'm like, "Hey, are you listen to Christian music?" And it's like, "Yeah, I'm listening to our music, bro." That's what I usually say. Like Jesus, the believer liveth unto God. This is the first command in the book of Romans. Likewise, reckon ye also yourselves to be dead and indeed unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ our Lord. See, we're supposed to avoid the image of evil in all that we do. So that, with that being said, we don't sin no more. You don't want to do that. You know, I thought I'd been a, a good follower, a good believer. Oh. God's taught me here and there, definitely. But I had to listen with my heart and my, my mind. I had to be fully sober. I had to start healing from things that I wasn't happy about. It took time. I understand for some people it's you we got to blame everything else and you know sometimes you just got to accept what it is and just understand that no matter what God's doing good in my life no matter what situation you're in and sometimes it's really hard to accept it really is You know, but God loved us so much. He sent His only Son, only one, to die for our sins, which we did to ourselves in the very beginning in Genesis. Adam and Eve took a bite of that fruit, forbidden fruit. So God cursed us. 
with a life of sin because we didn't listen to our Father. But He loved us so much He sent His only one and begotten Son to die for our sins. So if He can do that, our Father in Heaven, He loves us that much and dearly. Because I'll tell you what, if I, I, got, I got a son myself, and his name's Paul, I'll tell you what, I, I wouldn't want to send my son to die for a, a lot of the people here. You know? Let's put that into perspective here. Don't think at any time in your life he doesn't love you, because he does. We're all of his children, and every, every child is different. But we're, together, we're all his children. He, he's our father. So as a father, from my eyes, I know that God's made in my image. Or I am made in God's image. Let me say that again. As a father, I want to teach my children right and raise them right. So maybe something in your life that's happening right now, you might be in a storm. You might be on a mountaintop. I don't know. You might be in a valley. But wherever you are, just don't lose faith and stand strong and firm on the foundation. No matter what you're going through. Because God's got something good for you. Look at Job. The devil chose Job to tempt his whole life. But Job knew he wouldn't follow the devil. He would follow God. And the devil tormented him on earth. But he still never stopped. But Job was blessed. You can read the story about Job in the Old Testament. I, I please, I ask you to. And see all the things he goes through. Still stay a believer. Sometimes being a believer isn't the easiest thing. And there's some things you won't ever understand in your life. But that's the thing. You still got to stand firm with Christ. You got to stand firm with God, our Father. And you got to stand firm in that belief and have faith. And you can go to... Uh, is it... It's Hebrews 11.11. 11. Let's go there real quick. It's a great verse to know. Faith before the flood. That's the title. What about the... Re or no, Faith of the Patriarchs. It's not Hebrew 11.11. 11. It's 1.11, I think. Or maybe it's 11.1. Oh yeah. It's 11.1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. That's what faith is. So you got to have faith without anything. You know. That's true faith. we got to have faith in God. and We have to have faith in our Father. He's going to take care of us as His children. So don't get down on your guys' self. If we got this new life to start. We don't have to sin no more. We can stand firm on this foundation in all that we do. Alright. Co-eternal life. Eternal life was the life which Jesus Christ exhibited on the human plane. So we're talking about moral dominion here. And it is the same life, not a copy of it which is manifested in our mortal flesh when we are born of God. Eternal life is not a gift from God. Eternal life is the gift of God. The energy and the power which was manifested in Jesus will be manifested in us by the sheer sovereign grace of God. When once we have made the moral decision about sin, we're not going to do that no more, ye shall receive the power of the Holy Ghost, which I can feel the Holy Ghost sometimes in places, and it feels like, have you ever had your hair stand listening to a song? It's like that, but all over my body. I don't know if you guys have ever experienced that. And if you haven't experienced that, then maybe you should check yourself. Because the Holy Spirit, you can feel it. It's not something which He imparts. The life that was in Jesus is made ours by means of His cross. When once we make the decision to be identified with Him, if it is difficult to get right with God, 
it is because we will not decide definitely about sin. Immediately we do decide. The full life of God comes in. Jesus came to give us endless supplies of life that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Eternal life has nothing to do with time. It is the life which Jesus lived when he was down here. The only source of life is the Lord Jesus Christ. The weakest saint can experience the power of the deity of the Son of God if once he is willing to let go, any strand of our own energy will blur the life of Jesus. So let's not be blind to the life of Jesus. we got to accept that he died for our sins. We have to keep letting go and slowly and surely the great full life of God will invade us in every part and men will take knowledge of the us that we have been with Jesus. It's really powerful. Do we let Jesus and our Father have dominion in our lives? And not just a regular dominion, but a moral dominion, dominion, you know. That morality, that moral life. I'll tell you what, I thought thought I did. I'm uh, 27 today, and I'm learning things I never thought I knew. Or I didn't, I thought I knew. It's all in ourselves. We gotta be able and willing to make that choice and make that life walking choice to stand on the foundation every morning what is stopping you from opening the bible every morning what what is stopping you from opening the bible after work what is stopping you from going to church what is stopping you from doing volunteer work what is stopping you from doing all these things what is stopping you from doing anything that god wants you to do are you doing things to better yourself in your life just for yourself or are you doing things to help others? You got to ask yourself these questions and then write them down. Actually write them down. These are things you got to do to start working on yourself. The character you're going to be, you know, what kind of person are you going to be seen as when you die? The true person you are. These are things you need to ask yourself to be fully maturing as an adult and as a believer in Christ. You know, I don't want to be an adult. I want to be a child of God. I think that in itself will explain itself. You know, he's the potter. I'm the clay. And he's going to form me in ways that I need to be formed. God bless you all. Thank you again for listening. I hope you guys have a great week. Today's uh, another great Monday. It's the 12th. Let us be moral dominion in our life. All right, I'm going to go to prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for another amazing day. Please guide us with the Holy Spirit in everything that we do. I know since your son left, he, he sent an advocate. And I just ask to send this advocate with all everybody who's being touched by this message, and everybody who doesn't even hear this message. Let us be that light. Let us be that overflowing cup. Let our words and everything we do be sweet. Let us be meek. Let us be blessed in all these things. Let our hearts be warm and loving. Let us show charity. Let us... Become the person you want us to be. Be that child of God that you've designed us to be. I'm thankful that you've chosen our name from heaven before we were, before we were even knew we were full believers of you. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you guys. Have a great day. And like I said, let's have moral dominion. And then that moral divinity. Put all these things together. 
and then the decision of uh, not doing sin, you know, the moral decision of not doing sin. God bless you guys. I'm out of here.